In the last lecture, you saw how to use wildcards to make better functioning queries. In this lecture, I want to show you how to use one of my favorite queries, which is the parameter query. So if you've never used a parameter query before, what it does is it prompts the user for the criteria during runtime for the query. So before, you would type in the criteria here in the query window, and then you would run it. But if you had to change the criteria, you'd have to come back here into the query window. You get a little dialog box that pops up that asks the user what criteria they want. Now, if they want to change that criteria, all they have to do is just requery the window. So let me show you how this works. Let's say that we want to create a query that's going to show information just for certain customers. So here I've got my query and it's got the customers and the orders. And I'm going to come down here to the criteria section. And instead of typing a specific company name in here, I'm going to create a prompt box that has the user put in the company name when they run the query. So our prompt boxes are always surrounded by square brackets. So make sure you have that in there first. And then I'll type in what I want the user to be prompted with. And I'll just type in enter company name and close my square bracket. So now when I go to run this, I get a little prompt box that pops up. I'll type in company A and then hit OK. And there are the records for company A. Well, now maybe I want to find all the records for company F. So I can either click on Shift F9 on my keyboard or on the Home tab, I can click on Refresh All. And I'll type in company F and click on OK. So there are all the records there for company F. So see, this is really helpful, right? What if I wanted to make this even easier? What if I just want to prompt users for the letter of the company? So just typing in A, B, C, D, and so on. Well, I'm going to go in and change the criteria just a little bit. So right now I have enter a company name. I'm going to type in like, because remember, they're not going to be typing in the full name, just part of the name. So it's going to be something like that. So like, and then the letter for the company is always at the end. So there's going to be text before that. So I need to type in an asterisk. So there's something before it. And then whatever they type into the prompt box. And I'll actually change the prompt box a little bit. Let me make this wider. So instead of saying enter the company name, I'll say enter maybe the letter of the company name. All right, let's go ahead and test that out. I'll hit run. So here's my parameter box, enter the letter of the company name, and I'll just type in an A and click on OK. And now I have my company A and AA. Now if I wanted to specifically find AA, I could just type in AA there. There they are. I can type in just specifically CC. There they are. I'm going to hit refresh one more time to find company F. And there they are. So it's super easy. It's a great way to have a dialog box for other users just to come in and type in what they want. Instead of having to worry about going to the query window and maybe not knowing what to do in a query window, you can just create these pop-up boxes. They type in what they need and then there's their information. All right, let me show you another one. I'll head on back to design view and I'll get rid of the criteria that's there under company. And this time what I want to do is again, I want to take a look at order dates, but I'm going to create a parameter query here and it's going to ask the user for the start date and for the end date. So I'm going to use a range of dates here. Let me go ahead and make order date this field a little bit longer. So if you remember from the last lecture on wildcards, if I want to find a range of dates, I'm going to use between. And then since I want the user to put in a date, I will type in a prompt. I will type in enter a start date and close that prompt and then use my keyword there of and and then type in enter an end date and close the parameter box there. All right, so I've got between, enter a start date, and enter an end date. So I'm going to get two parameter boxes here. 
All right, let me go ahead and run this. So my start date here maybe will be 8 25 2015. Click on OK. And my end date may be 9 6 2015. And OK. So there are all the orders placed within that date range. And if I wanted to, I can go even further and put another parameter box on the company name. So three boxes would pop up. Now, another interesting thing about parameter queries is that later on, if you create a form or a report that's based off of a parameter query, when that report opens, the user will get the parameter dialog boxes as well. So for instance, if you have a monthly sales report and you don't want to see the records for all the salespeople, but just specific salespeople, you can have a parameter box pop up asking the name of the salesperson. Someone can type in that name and then the report will be filtered just for that salesperson. Or it could be a date range, it could be the city, whichever field you have, you can create a parameter off of it. And you can create these parameters on select queries like we did here and also action queries and cross tab queries.